majority is not. He's not going to take it. He's out of town. He was going to try to make it, but I suspect he okay. won't. Wow. This first meeting he's missed. That's pretty wow. good. Okay. So we'll call to order the meeting of the Special City Council. All council members are here except for Council Member Norvell. Are you taking this? Okay. <laughs> June's gone already. So, that's it. Public comments? Yes, sir. Um, Terry Bond with Medicina TV. Um, I worked with AT&T for 30 years, and I just I'm calling, or want to come here and talk about some things that have been in the plans with one of the county supervisors. Um, Ted Williams is working with um, talking about the county zoning areas for cell phone use on uh, property the county has, and by zoning they can actually establish the locations where zones where cell phones are permitted, so we, the city and everybody doesn't have to go through this constant run around of having to approve and then rezone cell phones being put in towers being hit or miss all over the area. And there are some areas that do respect international guidelines, which is 2,000 feet from human habitation. Everywhere north here of the, um, the industrial area is pretty good for that. Airport Road, a little bit about Quitting Creek. And they do have their main towers up on Bald Hill, but I would like, I don't know if they're going to talk about zoning today, or if you have that ability for them to long term. I'd like to put this in for some public comment about cell phones and health. Okay. And the new standards were the International Association of Firefighters Division of Occupational Health, Safety, and Medicine are recommending that they also not put these put near fire stations, police stations, or any other public service stations, which is the new recommendation. So if I could put that in as right. a public comment mm -hmm. for part of that. Thanks so much. This Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, just for some clarifications in terms, I know there's a lot of talk about 5G networks, which Verizon and AT&T are all testing their 5G LT, fifth generation LT equipment, which differs from 5G wireless equipment, which is 5 gigahertz. They're both referred to as 5G, uh, but are very different things. Um, so, just being aware that there is a difference between 5G wireless, which your home router can be a 5G wireless router, and the LTE 5G, there is no actual definition of what 5G means, even though at and is trying to put out their 5G E right now, which means absolutely nothing. So it's, it's more of a marketing term than anything else. But that is, but there is a difference between the 5 gigahertz equipment that you know smaller WISPs use. Um, so it would be good to make sure that the, the smaller 5G WISP type equipment has some sort, you know, these are usually smaller than three foot antennas, um, you know, much smaller equipment that's not these large, you know, cell tower, you know, large antennas. Um, we had a public comment and they commented about WISPs. Mm -hmm. It sounds very similar to what you're saying. I wonder if, if both of you are saying the same thing. Did you read them? I did. Yeah, and I believe Is that the, pretty much what he's saying to I believe the DK people who I yeah. Know a lot more about this than right. I do that are saying the same thing, it sounds like. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got a 5G WISP in my office. It's not 5G. That's right. right. I'm using right. it. Okay, it's just a 5 gigahertz bandwidth. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's an interesting, yeah. an important yeah. distinction there. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll say something. Um, not about the substance of this. I think you guys obviously should pass this today. Emergency ordinances don't last forever, so we'll need to start working on a permanent replacement. And hopefully, even though it's not required that they go to the Planning Commission, it's the obvious place for it to be vetted. So all of the more informed people can actually come and work on the details that we would need. But I'm concerned that recently we've been having a lot of near misses and misses of deadlines that are problematic. Like, this, this law has been on the books for a little while now, and I, something happened that shouldn't have, that we're having to do this now, and I'm not naming it. I actually think Tabitha has done a great job at the last minute working on something to fix this that wasn't really her job, but this is a problem. Like These are basic things that should be tracked, and we shouldn't be missing deadlines or coming close. So I find that very concerning as a member of the public. Okay. I'm sure you'll address that in your report. I'm sorry. I thought this was comments on non-agenda items. That's an excellent comment that we just made, and satisfy a lot of the concerns that I had to put a sunset on this. 
because being rushed forward, once it's in Brent, it's going to take an act of Congress to change it. So I, I, I think that might be part of it, and it would delay some of the concerns of some folks that I've talked to. 90 days, six months, something like that. Okay, great. So we'll give you the report. Okay. Um, so I think everybody is obviously aware that we have a deadline, April 15th, if we want to have any control of the aesthetics um, of wireless telecommunication facilities here in Fort Bragg, we have to get our guidelines in place. Um, I will be the first to admit that even though um, this has been in place um, since J January 14th of this year, um, we are sort of at the very end of it, trying to put it in. Um, I know many other entities, um, cities are scrambling to do the same thing. We're not the only ones. Um, that said, I think I, we, I have acknowledged to anybody who's asked that this is a, a draft. We need to get it into place. Um, there is a lot I think we do need to work out. We also um, acknowledge that we, we currently have in our inland and coastal um, general plans, um, a section on telecommunication facilities. It doesn't address the things that we're addressing here. Um, and we also acknowledge that there may be some um, conflicts. And so we want to kind of, the, the whole purpose behind this when we get finalized and we bring it back and go through a more thorough process is to actually make those consistent um, and make sure that we're following all of the law. The other thing here is that um, this is an area that lots has happened, a lot of le legislation and regulation, both um, at the state level and at the federal level, has happened over the last few years, and I don't expect that to um, stop. This is an area where there are lots of people still fighting it. There are lots of lawsuits and litigation still out there pending that could impact um, not only our ability to have aesthetic guidelines in place, but also how we do that. So one of the other things that we would like to do is take a look at um, our current telecommunication um, policies and, and regulations and make sure that they're also current with current law today. Um, so all that said, I'm certainly open to um, that process. We are doing a urgency ordinance put in place the ability for us to actually adopt the guidelines in the second step. Um, just as a reminder, we do have to have four out of five council members approve that or it will not move forward. Um, so that's the, the threshold that we have. A um, couple of other things I want to mention. One of the things um, that we want to add um, to the um, actual guidelines once we put those in place is the ability to have an administrative review um, or an over at the counter permit for some things to make it a little simpler. And really, the, the defining guideline there would be making sure that you have something that's pretty self-contained, small and narrow, and doesn't, um, if you have it on a pole or something else, will have a height restriction of 35 feet on these administrative reviews, and then nothing that's sticking out beyond the pole, um, so that we can we can actually have a, a quick and easy way to get these through as long as folks are complying, and we'd like them to be 500 feet away from any residential um, the residential areas or zones. Um, and the best, really what we're trying to do here is make these so that they blend in in our community and don't detract from it. So I can answer questions. I will be the first to admit that I have learned a lot fairly recently, but I don't know anywhere near as much as most of you in this room that came to talk. So um, I can answer questions um, the best of my ability, or we can try to get back to you. Okay, just one. Make sure you got everything straight. We need all four to vote for this if we're going to do it. Yes. There is a deadline of April 15th, which is Monday. Correct. It's Friday, so obviously mm -hmm. today's taking it to do this. Um, this is, for lack of a better term, sort of a place setter ordinance, and then we're going to pass this. So we'll have something that we can then move on to our second action. But in fact, we can come back, uh, since this is a uh, emergency ordinance, fairly easily and change this one so because not, I think that's what the concern is here. I'm hearing in the room that's my concern coming in as well, so I'm hearing kind of what I was thinking. So a question to you is, how does that, how does that work out? So the, there's two steps today. The urgency resolution is basically just putting on the books that we will adopt um, the guidelines, the aesthetic guidelines before April 15th. That, that's really all that the ordinance does is it places it in our code so that we have it there. 
The second step, which we're going to take today, is actually passing a resolution which sets forth that policy. Okay. We do it as a resolution for another reason, which is it makes it a whole lot well, easier to, to fix it and change it as we go forward. Okay. Um, so That's what I thought. I wanted to make sure that we got yeah. that out there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so yeah, what what this does, the only thing this does is say that we'll put it in place be, on or before April 15th. Okay. <clears throat> and again, if, if we're not, I, I want to be careful, we probably don't want to pass the um, ordinance if we're not interested in passing the resolution in the second stage. I think so. <laughs> and some of the minutiae in that second stage, uh, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it on the agenda, but um, that, those are the type of things that are easily uh, Changed yes. from and the public and in the bedroom of meeting on the agenda. Okay. And the planning commission would get involved in that process too. We can. Okay. Yeah, I think we All should. right. All right. Yeah. <coughs> Any questions? I'm good. Yeah, I would certainly like more public input and um, a little bit more expertise to lend themselves to this process. There's there's no doubt we can we can benefit from that. Um, I'm just gonna ask him for a quick overview of, of what falls under under the aesthetic guidelines. I mean, sorry, as far as what we can speak to today. I'm, just, I'm never, sorry, I'm not sure I'm following. Never mind. I, let's proceed. So, I, are I, you, I still have a question. Are you asking about what can go into them, like what um, what what we can what we can regulate, or are you mm -hmm. okay? We are we are pretty narrow um, as far as what we can can regulate as and this is one of the few small areas that the FCC has left potentially for now um, open for us to look at. So it really is how it looks, how it blends in, um, placement, those sorts of things. Um, we have a little bit of control over where they're placed, um, but we 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 are limited in some of that. The zone issue, I do not familiar with, so that's something we can look at, but it's, it is separate from this at this point in time. Proximity to residential, is that? That's the 500 feet, so that's what we're looking at doing as far as where they can be placed. So that is part of these guidelines? Yeah, we're, yes, for an admit, actually I take that back. For an over-the-counter easy administrative review permit, we would have the 500 feet in place. The guidelines don't necessarily have those same requirements. You, you could still get a permit outside of that process, but it would actually go through review. And and where, how did we land on 500 feet? Um, it's how, to be frank, it's what a lot of other people do. Despite, I mean, it sounds like the international guidelines are too. Okay. But California just issued theirs, but that was just like a month ago. But I had other but Again, this is changing all the time. No. Before Monday, it's good. By Monday, it might change again. <laughs> While we're talking about this particular issue, there is one. It's right there down that alley behind Norvell's. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's within 500 feet of Walnut Street Apartments, I'm sure. Is that grandfather Dan? I mean, there, there, there's one there already. I think, unfortunately, they are because they got permitted. And yeah. They went okay. to yeah, I, I, them because they're plenty of issues. So, if you want to see an example right? of sort of an unregulated situation, take a look at that. Something now, it's hard, you know, it's, it's, you don't see it. It's not somewhere you your eyes would go to necessarily because it's right by the PGD courtyard. There is one there, and that's kind of what they look like. Before we started regulating the guidelines, yeah, multiple, a lot of things are up there. Uh, and there isn't, and there is part of part not of visually obstructed in any way. <laughs> you know, it looks like there's something you put on the moon. One of the one of the things that is in the guidelines is to try to co-locate those so that right. it, so that we don't have holes everywhere. Um, the other thing, and I think that that should be pointed out, is that in theory these things are getting a lot smaller. So the 5G idea, and again, I'm not an expert on 5G either. Somebody else in the room probably can speak better to this. Um, but we're looking at smaller and smaller um, transmitters, antennas, and equipment. This so. is all strictly within the city limits, right? Correct. Okay. So I, I downloaded just four randomly uh, aesthetic guidelines. Danville, Santa Clara County, uh, Pittsburgh and Sonoma. Okay. And um, one of the most helpful was the Sonoma one, which had a whole list of things to look for. And all, almost all of them had a checklist. So if someone applied to put one in, 
the checklist asked all these questions. You know, like how big is it? Where is it going to be? I don't know if we have a checklist like that, but I think it's... We, we don't at this point because really I helpful. did this two days ago. Okay. Actually, a day and a half ago. It's really helpful. So, yeah, and, and we could copy these, you know. Yeah, and, and we, part of it, talking about like the administrative review process, there's no reason we can't try to figure out a way to simplify using checklists or even summaries um, once we get something final in place. We, we probably wouldn't want to do it right away because we're talking about coming back and changing this, but once we get something that everybody's happy with, I think that would be great. So one thing that we don't have, and that I will just briefly, I mean, I haven't had a chance to really scrutinize, but um, was the penalty. Um, so if someone just says they're going to do whatever they're going to do, and they just put in whatever they do, and they don't maintain it, and they don't take it down, or whatever, there has to be a penalty for that. So that I think that has to be incorporated in whatever ordinance we have now. There's some standards. So just to be clear, um, we probably, we, are you okay with us passing what's, you know, without too many um, As long as we can amend it. Okay, yes. We're not restricted to the April 15th? No, we're restricted to April 15th to get it in place. Okay. But we can amend it and make it. Yes. Tweak it. Yeah, and we're going to want to. We need to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just had one more clarifying kind of important point of information that we're discussing right now is on private property. The rules are quite a bit more flexible for the communications company and public right ways. So they have a lot fewer restrictions. So it may be understood that you can't have something in a residential zone, but that's not something that carries over into the street inside of the residential zone. Where are these located now? Well, a lot of them are on monopoles and antennas on private property because they're generally wide ranging. The next generation is envisioned to be a lot more dense of a network. And there are a lot of places that are trying to do that by putting the new antennas on poles in the right of way. So on top of um, utility poles, on top of street lights, on top of the traffic signal lights. So it's, it's going to be a different looking system. It's going to be different looking oh, system. I know, but I'm just wondering currently what. Well, you mentioned the one at Norvell's? Yeah, <laughs> that's probably about average for what you see. But, that's, but again, that's for a much less dense network. And so really kind of a different situation than what we're looking for in the, in the next generation of our cell uh, facilities and, and infrastructure. Can I interrupt? Sure. I did talk to the line, one of the linemen about three months ago about this, that, um, and they're told, and as I was told, the AT&T plan is to put them in the telecommunication right away of the new little ones, and they're building for that in the rural areas. To do right. that, basically, yeah, basically what I heard. yeah, basically, it's going to be no bigger than a terminal that's on the pole anyway. So that is their plan. But on the on the other side of that, that doesn't fall within the telecommunications law of 1939. They keep getting caught on that, that they do have to pay right away in cities and counties that have them. But, but that's another. Yeah, whether it's a another phone time. easement or a public right away, there's a lot of stuff right, right, right. But we want to go and want to follow up. And, and that's what Ted's trying to do with the county is that is that just try to have and this is the point is that where there's really good facilities where they could be yards and if the city had locations they'd already purchased they could zone them in some ways to say here's good locations if there was that that's all the necessary stuff including a pad which would give you guys you know a little bit more control over them just popping up willy-nilly all over the place. And that's where they end up with the co-locations. I used to be the guy that wired them all. That's why I say we used to be part of those agreements I used to work on. And co-location is the best location, way you can do it. And the city could get it proactively ahead of time. Not right now. But <laughs> yeah, you know. They're just, you know, because that's what, you know, Ted's got a couple people at the, in the county interested in doing that. And that's part of his telecommunication plan for the county. And because they own those sites, they charge rent, yeah. and they make money on that instead of just letting them pay private property part, uh, parties. So the city itself becomes a partner. To address Council Member uh, Alvin Smith's uh, uh, concerns and issues about the checklist and that type of thing, does the ordinance uh, speak to a policy of some kind that we can actually change over time uh, so that as we develop these things? The, the so it's the, the, or, the ordinance does not. Okay. It's the resolution, ah. which is the second step that on the agenda today, um, and that would be through through a, 
you would change that through just updating the resolution. Okay. Um, so, as far as a checklist, that's more administrative. Right. That wouldn't be we something. Yeah. That, that yeah. would help us review it. Yeah. That would be Whatever. part of our administrative process <clears throat> for reviewing okay. it, especially if we, um, especially if we're putting in place an administrative review, which is over the counter, versus you know a, a discretionary review that takes um, more into account. We want something that gave some guidelines as to which um, bucket it fell into. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Did you have a question? Um, I had a comment. Okay. So, do I need to like state my name yeah. in the record? Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. Heather Gerwig, CDFC, and um, we're contracted by the county to do broadband coordination work. So, if at some point, um, what may make sense, and I, I would leave it up to the jurisdictions, but if it makes sense to have a uniform policy that works for all the jurisdictions, then there's a way to help us where we can help facilitate that being worked out in a way that reduces your staff time and investment and comes up with something that's suggestion, we're happy to support that through that contract work. Okay. So, uh, I'll just tell them. Uh, uh, name is Michelle. Uh, I, uh, well, firstly, I, I don't know any of the technical stuff about this, but I know there's going to be a lot of people that don't know the technical stuff. and a significant amount of them are likely not going to admit that. So I'm just wondering, uh, is there going to be a place at which people can go and find accurate information about what 5G is and what all this technology is? There are, there are people who literally think 5G will melt your brain. So just I think it's important to, you know, the, 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 the people you know, trying to uh, go against this, go against us, to go against the, the town bringing in more, bringing in this 5G stuff and try or evade the people that are going to be super against that. Just by having a, an area you can go to to get that after information, you know, it's by people who know what it is. That I, you know, I think what you're suggesting, perhaps, is when she, she develops a staff report, the city manager, I'm assuming it's still you, and I'm sure it would be, but... This could take five years. No, you're right. Am I right there? Yeah, you're right. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. You never know. Thank That's you. all I got to say. I meant to say her, but then I said city manager. Okay. But in the staff report, I think what he's suggesting is, you know, Science has shown us that, you know, they're, or whatever, trying to address the concerns there so it's up front and so we don't have the first 30 minutes of people coming up saying, hey, I heard, or whatever, you're trying to dispel some of that and maybe have a link to in the staff report. It come, yeah, comes out Tuesday before certainly. the Monday meeting where to find the information. And I think, I think he's trying to suggest that we try and allay some of those fears right up front because you know you're going to hear them. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of validity to them. No, no, no. So if we're if we're taking it upon okay. ourselves to educate people about the effects of wireless, no, show them where the, where the information is. Yeah, yeah. I, I think both sides. <laughs> we we. Yeah. I'm not sure that I can. I'm not an expert, so I'm, I'm not going to put the information out there. But I will certainly provide sources that people can review. That'd be great. The latest information at the Congressional Committee last week by the FCC and every telecommunication representative there said there has been zero safety studies on 5G. None of them know a thing about it. There is zero information on safety. That's straight to the, from the FCC and all the telecom to Congressional Committee last week. So that's, that's, part that's, part. A, that's the kind of information we need in a staff report. That's, yeah. that's all yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah. On yeah. one that's side right. or another, so, just so get it in there. It's so. not like you, you can even go a conspiracy. Nobody knows. Yeah, so. Okay. Can I, did have to help me? Oh, sorry. Paul Clark, can you clarify for me, please? And, and I don't know anything, trust me, about this anyway. One of my concerns in reading this a couple of days ago was communication facilities shall be co-located. Is a small cell a communications facility? The way it implies it is not, because you, the, in the description of what everybody's saying, there, we're expecting those to pop up everywhere. So if you're collating, you're going to collate those smaller ones too. There's only going to be one in town. If the first one comes in and you say it has to be all, you have to allow code, uh, you know, additional types. 
Yeah, you, I don't think you could have, if it's going to be the 5G and the small cells, I don't think the network network will work if you have one site, just because, you know, you need, these are, that's the whole idea of these, is that you have more of them, and they're smaller, and they move the signal. Well, that makes sense, because then, theoretically, if someone came in for a new cell tower, that would be the only one that would ever come in again. Yeah, that's not, that, for 5G, I don't even think that that's, that's possible to bring it in. So co the co-location is if it can be done. That is the, the first choice. Okay, good. That, my, my concern was, and that's why I wanted to bring that up, is how does one, say there's 15 around town and the next guy comes in, 14 people have just gone through that. You, why don't you look, what's going to be the requirement of that checklist? How do you determine whether or not you can or cannot co-locate? Co excuse me. person says, yeah, you can do it, but it's $100,000. Is that enough to say that will work, or they got to pay $90,000? So, so two things. One of the things I do know um, is that in the 116 page, um, the declaratory ruling and the third report and order, um, there are very there are specific limits, and they're very small on how much we can charge to process these. So. From the city standpoint, we do not have a lot of regulate, regulatory authority. So the hundred thousand dollars is, you know, that's not probably something that would happen. But we can work out the details. I, because I, I don't think it, the the point of it is to try to give anybody a monopoly. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure because I could see that's why I strongly suggest a sunset on this because if if the city gets busy and they never get back to this, that's what we're stuck with. I and, somebody, that's true. and somebody will come up and hit a brick wall. And, we something we really want, and you're going to be in the same thing. You're going to have to go back and change the ordinance to make it work. And that's my fear with the process. But I understand here. I have a point of order question. Birdies in town. Can a council member come late and vote? No reason why I couldn't. I'm not a. These are not a part of the discussion. We haven't done the pledge of allegiance yet. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I don't see why. I really do. If he wants to. Uh, and he can certainly I'm come. not the city attorney, but I, I've never I've had people show up late during the first something on the agenda, and you know, we roll through. If it's it happened in closed session, as you recall, yeah. people have showed up late, and we just roll through. So, well, if he wants see. to come, but well, we haven't even acted yet. Well, we have it, and he's read all the materials. Right, and so. the first one, you know, it's like sets up the second one. So, right. The worst thing that's going to happen is is that we would be challenged, and as long as, and then it would, you know, you'd still want to work right. at five. So okay, okay, okay. Yeah. coming? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Same town, so let's just see. Okay. Um, so, more questions than this? No, I'm just wondering about the follow up. So, um, I want to make sure that we plan a follow up with the subcommittee or whatever. So the first action, the, the ordinance action, is basically setting us up to be able to define much further the aesthetics and all these other things. Right. And that's the second part of the agenda. Proposed. So. <laughs> proposed aesthetics. I mean, Which is the second one. Right. So I think if there's no more questions on the first one, Ordinance, I'm prepared to make a motion. And then when we get to the second one, I think we should continue discussion about aesthetics and that sort of thing. And then again, maybe re emphasize the fact that we'll be given a chance and an opportunity and other council members as well to amend that resolution. So Hopefully sooner. Have you never adopted any? No, we have. We, we currently have <coughs> in, our, in our inland and coastal um, land use plan telecommunications. Um, regulations and requirements. Um, this basically is so that we can, this is to comply with the most current federal FCC um, ruling, regulations and rulemaking that allow us to put the control over the aesthetic specific to the smaller, you know, it's, it's about our five piece. So it's kind of an expansion um, and more specific on what we already have in place. The other piece of this um, as I said, is that we we will need to go back and look at what we already have in place um, because some of that probably is not yeah, current law, yeah. and we want to make sure that we're, we don't end up with two conflicting sets. Yeah. Even though we we put a clause in 
um, the ordinance that basically allows that this would override anything that's not consistent in the, the current land use and yeah. coastal plan. But we, we need to clean those up. We need to actually make sure that they work together, right. and we have not done that process. And I think it was pointed out uh, by Heather, too, that we could, having it set up this way with a resolution form, if there is in some way uh, an opportunity to get others together, the county and other players that are going through a similar um, situation trying to develop some guidelines, then maybe you could sort of get a generic one going and then our resolution, you know, it'd be easier again, just back to that and and that might be a, a something interesting to look into. If, if it's oftentimes difficult to work with the county, um, I have you know, over the years, but also it can be easy to do and, and other groups and so uh, you know they did it lining up their uh, waste management contracts they finally lined them up so they're all coming up at the same time pretty much you know? and and you know for reasons uh, similar to uh, what we're talking about I think it would be good to try and get something that works for everybody so that you know, wherever you are in the county you're pretty sure about this I can be nice because so many stories of the planning department in the city is different from the county planning, you know, all that. So, without going any further, I thought that was a good idea she had. And I will tell you that the city of Ukiah um, and what we're putting in place here are almost the same, and they did that on April 3rd. Okay. So, they're, good. you know, we are all, a lot of cities are doing this sort of last minute scramble to get it in place before they get back to the Wait, what, did you start a motion yet? Well, I'm about ready to. Okay, okay hold on one second. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. uh, has there uh, been any uh, research of looking into, if, well, did, you know, our weather has been very uh, harsh on everything. You know, just, just like, um, uh, there just, uh, the, the way we look, uh, the way that the aesthetic is done, uh, like, uh, has there been any research into the, the possible uh, uh, lifespan of, uh, of the um, of these new networks to be put in, especially since you know we're we're uh, we're a coastal town uh, when the the the, uh, the weather is very you know, salty and moist. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if there's any real. Well, any of the experts here? Uh, no, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other Actually, Fort Frank is where AT&T does their corruption test. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. There's only one place more corrupt than that at the base of the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but all of that stuff is tested here. It's not really the salt and, the, and, the, and all that. It's the um, fog that oh. that intensifies the ultraviolet way rays. Oh. And that's what corrodes and dis um, disintegrates plastic. Oh. So that I've been part of a thirty year testing program yeah. on that and they've never found anything yet uh, to totally make it that works here on the coast. But they right. that's why everything's in such horrible shape. Uh, and they don't yeah. replace it. But what you're gonna get there, yeah, that's like old PG and E transformers that would drip PCB and look ugly as hell. Yeah, I'm concerned too. If they're gonna put something that rots away and gets ugly and starts to fall apart, you know, in the especially say in my view corner. Yeah, the, you know, the aesthetics. That's kind of what we're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. Is that they should maintain let's just use the word maintenance to keep the, the scenic aesthetics. But yeah, because a lot of these you know, I remember going through the fact that if they painted um a B box uh, brown or any other color, the city come down and say, no, it has to be green and blend into the uh, environment. And you got to put bushes around it. And that's here in Fort Bragg just 20 years ago. So that's what we're saying. That's what, yeah. All right. Um, yes, can I one, one, one. Oh, it was close. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for the sake of, of being able to hold on to our power to make these choices, I, you know, yes. But I would like to say I'm concerned that. They're having, I'm concerned that we discuss at length the distance from residential areas. When we revisit this, I just want to say, for posterity's sake, I think we need to relook very mindfully at how far it can be from residential and look at distance from schools um, as well as other uh, vulnerable populations and really actually talk about the scientific, the, the difference between these, these small, these lists and the effect on the human body. I, you know, I know this industry historically doesn't have safety studies done, um, 
to get Chase how to spell your last name. Well, the first name here, uh, W-A-C-H-T-E-L. I would not have gotten that, so I'm glad you asked. So the main thing on the floor is just um, voting on adopting. Yes, disorder. Or having the ability to adopt uh, guidelines for Correct. Is that exactly. But that's, so so is anybody that? Well, whatever. Yeah. We're going to make it I've been saying this for five minutes. You've got to work with it. 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 Thank you. Yeah. The word is right on the side. This is all we're trying to do. You want to be in my department already. Then we'll get into the authority. All right, here we go. I'm going to make a motion. We adopt an urgency ordinance adding chapter 12.10 wireless telecommunications facilities to title 12 public improvements in the Fort Bragg Municipal Code relating to aesthetic guidelines. For deployments of wireless communications in the city of Fort Bragg. Do we have a second? I second it. Any discussion? No. Roll call, please. Uh, Mayor Lee? Oh, uh, yes. Um, Councilmember Peter? Yes. Um, Councilmember Marcel Hay? Yes. And Councilmember Albany Smith? Yes. Okay, so that's adopted. Thank you. Um, the next item is 2B, receive a uh, oral report and consider adoption of a resolution establishing aesthetic guidelines for development of wireless communication facilities. And how about the, the Yes, data? so this is really sort of the second piece of this process. So the last one, the ordinance allowed you to put this in place. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the reason we, we are doing this as a resolution is it is much easier to change and modify not only um, to get what we'd like to be kind of that final product after a little bit more public input and um, some additional information both on what the current law is but also um, from the experts. And it would also, it's kind of twofold, it also allows us to um, going forward change things as the law changes again because we're probably, the minute we put this in place, it's probably already going to have some flaws. Um, from things that are happening at the FCC, the federal level, and even the state level. So this is really the details. Um, again, I can tell you that it, it's not as well thought out because of the time frame, um, but that's certainly something that we, we would like to and assume that we'll go back and revisit. Um, so I am open to all of the, the suggestions that we've had here, um, and then it would be, again, council as a, as a whole's final decision as to what we change going forward. This is also where if you wanted to put some sort of um, an expiration clause in, you could make a motion to add that. On the, re I'm sorry. No, no. On the resolution, it simply says, does hereby adopt the aesthetic guidelines for deployment of wireless communication facilities. And I'm a little uh, ambivalent about that because it doesn't say um, you know, with the uh, option of uh, updating, renewing, changing, whatever in the future. So this almost seems, it seems like it's, it's saying these are the ones. But keep in mind, um, anytime you have a resolution, it's, it's easily modifiable and changed. And we do, all, you'll, if you remember when we did um, the food truck, um, yeah. Changes in law. One of the things that Marie did was that she changed the ordinance um, to put in sort of the the hard law, the stuff that we wouldn't change very often. And then she has adopted by resolution those things that will probably change more regularly. Yeah. We do the same thing with our fee structure. Um, so the 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 ability to put the fees are in place are done by ordinance, but. Um, most, most of the time on an annual basis, we change those by resolution. And we set it up as a resolution so that those regular changes can happen. So it's kind of built into the mechanism that we're using for adopting. So they're just calling them guidelines. You're not calling them law or ordinance. No, yes. guidelines. Yes. And it's another reason it's, it's put into a resolution as opposed to an ordinance. If we put it into an ordinance, it would become 
um, the municipal code and, and regulations of law. Are we considering a sunset or a time that this would expire? Should it go to possibly at the ad hoc broadband ad hoc committee, which a few of us are in this room are on? Um, that could be one avenue to get it nuts and bolts, and then then maybe to planning and then to the council. So That's what you thought within the next um, few months, maybe like we would say, what do you think? Six months? Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. What do you think is reasonable for someone who's yeah. a realtor? Six months. Or six months? Just something within six months to force the review. Yeah. Right. Just in case. We want to have the review within six. We want to actually deadline the. Make it three months. Three months? Please. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's not how that would work. Six months is three months in government. That's good. That's good. If I may, um, as you're seeing, when you're under the time pressure, sometimes that doesn't lead to the best option. So even though, yes, you have a goal, soft goal of three to six months, it might be nice to give yourself a year to do the full process so the public isn't rushed, so that you're not rushed, and that you don't end up in a bind. So that's just my recommendation, having worked in government. Um, about that, and the ad hoc committee could hash it out again, too. Um, and then um, I think we all need an educational rollout first because uh, all of us, I'm not an expert. Either. Yeah, and, and you know, with social media these days, too, keep in mind if you wait too long, Heather, if there is something festering that's not correct, you know, if it gets run out of control, again, either someone thinking these things are not safe at all and going to kill everybody, or someone saying, ah, oh, you know, put them right next to me, I don't care. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we don't wait too long, is all I'm saying. I like the idea of it, because it'll take a couple of months. Yeah. It starts at a subcommittee, right. goes to a committee, then comes to the council, That's uh, and then, you know, fairly soon, so four then, then people can get up and say what they're going to say, That's right. and give us an opportunity to hear how the public feels about this. Uh, and if, if, you know, I, I think that's plenty of time. I think it is too, and then we but, might extend but it. The only thing she's talking about is we don't know about 5G, it might take a year. Well, by then we could go back and we could, since it's resolution form, we could change what, whatever safety measures we need to change. Maybe maybe 200 feet's too close. I don't know. We don't know. Off on a year. Uh, these are the kind of things we're going to have to think about because public safety is the first concern, obviously. Um, have we confirmed? With um, are we? Is there any possibility the sunset, sunset clause could undermine? I was actually. Well, thank you for bringing that up. Because <laughs> I was going to mention the way I would word it is that make it so that it will expire if it has not been reviewed and confirmed by council, so that it's not replacing it in the sense of it, it's not because if it expires and that happens, we may completely um, Oops. Yeah. blow our chances to right. actually have any aesthetic guidelines in place. So what I would suggest is we word it so that if it hasn't been reviewed and, and at the very either reviewed and revised or reviewed and confirmed by council within a year, it would expire. That's a good idea. And then okay. we can do it sooner if yeah. we were inclined. Okay. Also, this yeah. one second. Uh, one second. Does the council have any other? Yeah. Yeah, also, the, the, this technology will, I'm sure, advance and change by within a year. And I'm sure you'll, you might be dealing with the, some sort of newer, more compact version of uh, the things you're putting around now. Again, I, I don't know the, the, the plan, I just know that technology did, uh, for the amount of time that, or in the same way that and politics is extremely slow. Uh, uh, electronics and the advancement of that technology is equally as fast in the, the opposite direction. So I'm sure that by that time, you'll be talking about the chance that you'll be bringing up uh, new technology that wasn't even considered today, right now. 
Can I, can I interject that just using the term wireless telecommunication is a big term that includes a lot of other cell servers that's covered other. You might want to get a little more specific about 5G wireless or the technology. Because wireless, if that gets resolution going in, the way I'm hearing it would also affect the other services. So getting a little more specific might uh, keep you from getting in the middle of an argument later with the cell company wants to expand the lower long scale. Does the council agree with that? Well, it says in the resolution, or in the action guidelines here, increasing number of wireless communications facilities, including but not limited to the anticipated deployment of 5G networks, has significant potential for visual impact in the city of Fort Bragg. And then it goes on, wireless communication facilities are by blank for local emergency, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I mean, it, it, it kind of separates them a little bit, so I think we're okay. Yeah. Right? Well, actually, what you just read says it. I know. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, no, as long as we all know that that covers all wireless, because, I mean, you know, that does cover also the county's wireless, my wireless, because I, I do wireless broadcast this systems. Is just um, we're not talking about safety or anything. No, and we don't have the ability. Honestly, this is only this is, and this is the only thing at this point that we have the ability to try to have local control outside of, of looking at our other guidelines. So we can't expand it into too many other areas. But in proximity to... If you can tie that, that to aesthetics, yes. I think well, that's, that's the only one. And there is very much, you know, certainly view planes, those sorts of things, how they look are, you can, you can tie in. But it'll have to be reasonable to be that perspective. Do you think you can tie in? Specific institutions, as in like keeping them further away from school. Well, we have some of that already in Paris. So, procedural question if we wanted to add that uh, within a year sunset clause to the resolution, mm -hmm. would that be the final word? We have to yes. have the final word as right. even before. Um, you would do it, you would actually do it down below in the now, therefore, be it resolved. Does hereby adopt the aesthetic guidelines for deployment of wireless communication facilities in the city of Fort Bragg and attach to Exhibit A such and let's see such guidelines um, will expire if not reviewed and confirmed or reviewed and, and reviewed and revised um, within one year of adoption. That's how I would work. Did you get that, Brenda? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll, well, we'll, get well, we'll, we'll, we'll include it in the, yeah. in the uh, that, motion. And, but that requires that language requires it to be revised. If not, if we don't, you have to. You don't have to revise it, but you do have to confirm it. Okay. So it's either review and confirm, or review Water. and advise within a year of adoption. Got it. So you could keep what's it, what we have in place, but it would at least take another resolution of council to confirm that. So again, unless there's any other questions or comments, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. Can I ask one more thing? Sure. Colombo over there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have a view corridor of the ocean from my window. I would not like a cell phone that tower that went into that view corridor. One of those tree things? Well, I'm just wondering if the aesthetics include, because that would severely diminish the value of my property and everything, and Paul as a realtor could speak to that. Does, that, does a view corridor, an ocean view, include as that those aesthetics are we able to, okay just bring that up because I don't want my own I'm surprised to hear you say that Jeremy oh. <laughs> so does that does that no, I don't want to say it by or you guys are, that's a wide open then then one person would say no that's that's pretty tall with the LCP it sounds like you can only control public view corridors from public right away right away can we yes so not, yeah, so you're not. Oh, it's yeah, it's going to have the same limitations. So okay. to a point, we can we can certainly view planes are part of it, but you yeah, it's not going to. I don't think it's going to be as wide open as. It, yeah, just a because that won't hold up. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. But it does. There's no question. It has a potential to value of property. But normally, like the coastal zone, it's public. You know, like yeah. on the highways, that kind of stuff. And there's an actual sequel review to the telecommunications towers. Is that correct? Can I read that somewhere in there? Yeah. Well, I think I think it's going to depend on the administrative review. So there are probably some that will and some that won't. Okay. But I I am not going to make a call on that okay. right now because that, 
I would be yes. Well, yeah, and I, 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 I could have just brought up something that I totally misread. But somewhere in this So we are, we are saying that this is exempt from CEQA, the policy itself. Right. Okay. Uh, are there any uh, existing examples of integrating these, uh, 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 integrating, you know, this, uh, uh, this 5G uh, cell stuff into, um, uh, uh, basically into art, into uh, art pieces? Are there any cities that have done that? I, I don't Yes. Know. I don't know yet. Yeah. I can tell you all yeah. four of these have art. Okay. okay, so that's a possibility to, oh, absolutely. to commission like an art to have a city commission on an art piece and then, okay. First thing came to my mind, actually, mm -hmm. when I started thinking about this, controlling the aesthetics in a way that would be adding to our murals and our appreciative mm -hmm. work. Anyway, so good that's point, I appreciate that. So, if there's no further discussion, no more further questions, I'd make a motion that we adopt the resolution of Fort City Council adopting aesthetic guidelines for deployment of wireless telecommunications facilities in the city of Fort Bragg, amending the now, therefore, be it resolved to a sentence that would include if after 12 months the city hasn't uh, fully adopted or reviewed or revised, you know, you can do it much more succinctly. Than I can. Yes. Friend, what did she have? That's why she's I asked you had first one. She's going to say it again, I think. Yeah, so what we were going to do is attachment exhibit A. Um, so long as council has re reviewed and revised or reviewed and confirmed the guidelines within a year of adoption. That's the second one I can remember. That's it. Ooh, that covers both things. Have you got that, Brenda? Yeah, just a second. Okay, so that's my motion amended with the add okay, adding that sentence there on the now, therefore, we resolve. A motion with a, an amendment. We have a second. I uh, second. We have a motion and a second with the amendment. Roll call, please, Brenda. Okay. Um, Mayor Lee. Yes. Uh, Councilmember Peters. Yes. Councilmember Marcel Hay. Yes. And Councilmember Alden Smith. Yes. Okay. Excellent. With that, we will adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Good work, Kevin. Uh, Just this one. Yeah.